Getting paid for doing what you love is for some people an elusive dream. But that dream came true for one man who was born and raised in the St. Louis area and travels the world to share with us the wonders he's seen. Have you ever watched moving images of nature like these? The kind that take your breath away and wondered who shot that? In the case of this documentary entitled Everest, A Climb for Peace, the cinematographer is Webster Groves native Brad Clement. It's Missouri uh, that, that was my original inspiration for my love of the outdoors. My love of the outdoors blossomed into a passion for climbing and filmmaking cinematography was uh, more or less a way for me to stay in the mountains professionally. But before Clement learned cinematography, he took up still photography. His mother, Suzidi, is also a photographer. And I remember seeing some of the black and white photos he did for his class in high school. And I just knew immediately that he had a real gift for photography. Did he just put this up on his own? Did he ask you for guidance? How did that work? No, he, no, he never asked for guidance, really. He used my dark room some. But, uh, no, he's always done things on his own. He he's is always. exceptionally independent. Yes. And has, uh, has sort of followed his own, uh, his own path. The path of Clement's documentary takes viewers along on an expedition by an international multicultural group of climbers. It includes two Israelis and a Palestinian. The goal is to promote peace and understanding through teamwork. My friend's um, uh, attitude towards my project to climb Everest, some of my friends were against it. Uh, they didn't see how uh, I can cooperate with Israelis who are our enemies and uh, it made my uh, uh, task a little bit more difficult. Behind the border we have a people and people that want just to live and, and that's what it's mo much more clear to me now that the Palestinian and the Israeli should live together. It's funny we, we became a bit of a family. Again we're spending so much time together and it's not just simple time. It's time in pretty rough conditions, pretty risky conditions, where you're, you're facing true obstacles. And it's in the moment. Those obstacles are very real. Your decisions have immediate consequences. In the two and a half months it takes to reach the summit of the world's highest mountain, Clement says not that much time is actually spent climbing. Because it's so high, your body has to adjust. It's a huge physiological challenge just to exist at base camp, 17,500 feet. So going any higher is just more and more difficult. And so much of that time is spent at base camp letting your body adjust. You will spend time at base camp, climb up to a certain height, shock your body into uh, that altitude, spend a day or two there, but then come back down to base camp. You'll then spend a week lounging at base camp. The next rotation, if you will, you'll go up a little higher than your last high point. And it's a series of these rotations going a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. But you're always coming back to base camp, always relaxing. So much of that two and a half months is spent at base camp or advanced base camp in a tent uh, recuperating. So the actual climb, the climb to the top, that final rotation, it's about a six day period. More than 2,500 people have made it to the summit of Mount Everest. Some 200 have died trying. This climbing season, over 500 people will attempt to reach the summit. And in doing so, they enter what is called the death zone. That's because climbers' bodies start shutting down. To further complicate matters, bad weather can appear without warning. Clement has to deal with all those factors as a climber at the same time he tapes the expedition. So how well does his equipment hold up in those conditions? The quick answer to filming at altitude is thank goodness the equipment is so awesome. It's getting smaller and smaller every year while at the same time the resolution is getting better and better and better and the equipment, knock on wood, has been really wonderful to work with. The, the, Equipment rarely freezes. It rarely is affected by the moisture. 
the tapes seem to work. <laughs> and so as long as you're conscious about humidity, condensation, it, it tends to take care of itself. And, and high mountains are extremely dry. They're essentially deserts. There's so little humidity that you don't have to worry about too much as far as camera not working. The batteries, that's the biggest problem. The batteries tend to not have very long lives in the extreme cold. It can be minus 30, minus 40. It can be 90 degrees above uh, zero. So this huge range of temperatures. The batteries can be affected. But if you just have enough batteries and you switch them out and keep them warm and, and, and try to manage all that's around you, it works okay. Though Ali recovered from his altitude sickness down at base camp. What do you feel, Ali? Back at this altitude, he's feeling the effects yet again. Ali Bushnok, the lone Palestinian on the nine-member climbing team, was unable to complete his mission. But his new friend, Israeli Dudu Yifra, reached the summit and carried the flags of Israel and Palestine with him. Dudu, my friend, congratulations. I really feel very happy for you. Ali, now I'm with the Israeli and the Palestinian flag. I'm going to take a picture. You are not here, but the flag is here. And this is my present for you, my friend. <laughs> you made my day, uh, Dudu. This one, you made my day. I really appreciate it, and everybody will appreciate this moment. We're very happy to have uh, Brad with us tonight. So the goal is... Brad Clement, who now lives in Colorado, was in St. Louis to promote the documentary. It aired on the Nine Network in November of 2010. The year we filmed this project, 11 people died during that season. Some people we knew uh, didn't come back. So yeah, it's, it's serious. And what's funny is most mountaineers, although I would say maybe, maybe, their level of risk acceptance is higher than, than the normal population. Really, most mountaineers are all about mitigating risk. Every decision when you're on that mountain is about being safe. A and so it's this, it's this strange, uh, strange situation where you're in a risky environment, but you want to do everything you can do to reduce that risk. And so, yeah, it's, it's a constant, constant uh, battle, constant uh, thought on how to reduce risk and be safe and come home. So it's a sobering event. If you were to ask Clement what was the best part of the Everest project, he wouldn't say it was trekking where precious few had gone before. And he wouldn't tell you it was being part of a unique quest for peace. He would say it was meeting Tanya Riggs. <laughs> you did it. You did it. She was a climber on the Everest Peace Project expedition. I was the cameraman, cinematographer, and for whatever reason, uh, she was attracted to me. I, 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 as I've said to other people, obviously the altitude was affecting her, to, to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but to my benefit, and, uh, and I was attracted to her, and we had this uh, wonderful romance on Mount Everest, and, and we're living happily ever after. So that was, for me, uh, the best thing that could have ever happened on this expedition. Clement and Riggs met in May of 2006 and married two years later. And I knew that if he ever found somebody serious, it would be on a mountain, that it would have to be on a mountain. <laughs> and uh, that was one of the things I actually would always say a little prayer for, please let there be a beautiful girl on this mountain climb. <laughs> and and you time, got what you wanted. This time there was. <laughs> It just goes to show what can happen when you take the road less traveled.